The 1970s saw the rise of a new destroyer in the United States Navy, the Spruance class. Named after the renowned World War II Admiral Raymond A. Spruance, these ships were unlike their predecessors. They were big, they were powerful, and they were designed for a new era of naval warfare. At first glance, many questioned their capabilities. They lacked the imposing gun turrets of older destroyers. Some even called them ugly, but the Spruance class destroyers were not built for show. They were built for a very specific purpose to hunt and destroy enemy submarines. The Navy knew that the threat from Soviet submarines was growing. These submarines, armed with nuclear missiles, posed a significant danger. The Spruance class, with its advanced sonar and anti-submarine weaponry, was the answer. These ships were designed to be silent hunters, capable of detecting and eliminating the submarine threat. Stealth was crucial for the Spruance class to fulfill its anti-submarine role. The design emphasized minimizing the ship's noise signature. This was achieved through several innovative features. One key aspect was the use of gas turbine engines. These engines were quieter than the traditional steam turbines used in previous destroyers. The hull design also played a significant role in reducing noise. The Spruance class destroyers featured a sleek, streamlined hull that minimized water resistance and reduced the ship's acoustic signature. This made them much harder for enemy submarines to detect. To further enhance their stealth, the ships incorporated sound dampening materials throughout their structure. These materials absorbed vibrations and reduced the noise radiated into the water. This combination of design features made the Spruance class one of the quietest destroyer classes ever built. While designed primarily for anti-submarine warfare, the Spruance class destroyers were not limited to this role. They were versatile warships capable of engaging surface ships and land targets as well. This versatility stemmed from their impressive array of missile systems. The Spruance class destroyers were equipped with the Harpoon anti-ship missile system. The Harpoon, with its over-the-horizon range, provided a significant offensive capability. It could target enemy ships from a safe distance, keeping the Spruance class out of harm's way. Adding to their firepower was the Tomahawk cruise missile system. The Tomahawk, a long-range precision-guided missile, could strike targets hundreds of miles inland. This capability extended the reach of the Spruance class far beyond the horizon, allowing them to engage in strike missions against enemy infrastructure and command centers. Section 4. Versatility Proven, the Spruance class in Operation Desert Storm. The Spruance class destroyer's versatility was put to the test in 1991 during Operation Desert Storm. This conflict demonstrated their adaptability and effectiveness in high-intensity combat, deployed to the Persian Gulf, they played a crucial role in the naval campaign. Their Tomahawk missiles were invaluable in the conflict's opening hours. Striking key Iraqi military targets, they crippled air defenses. They also provided vital escort duties and secured sea lanes. Their performance solidified their reputation as versatile warships. Section 5. Legacy of the Spruance Class, A Lasting Impact. The Spruance class destroyers served the United States Navy for three decades. The last ship in the class, the USS Cushing, was decommissioned in 2005. Their retirement marked the end of an era, but their legacy lives on. The Spruance class proved to be a remarkably successful design. They demonstrated the effectiveness of a balanced approach to warship design. They were versatile warships capable of adapting to a wide range of missions, their service highlighted the importance of adaptability and technological innovation. The Spruance class destroyers may be gone, but they are not forgotten.